Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel study.com. Today we will get to know in detail about period of Mahajanapathas. So let's get started. Mahajanapathas were 16 large and powerful kingdoms or republics that existed in ancient India from around the 6th century BC to the 4th century BC. The term Mahajanapathas literally means great kingdoms or great states. These kingdoms were located in the northern and eastern part of ancient India and were characterized by a highly decentralized political structure, with each kingdom having its own king and administrative system. This period saw socio-economic development along with religious and political development across the indo gangetic plain. These permanent settlements led the evolution from Janapadas to Mahajanapadas. By the 6th century BC, the center of major political activity shifted from western part of Gangetic plain to the eastern part comprising the present-day Bihar and eastern Uttar Pradesh. Major reason for this shift was the fertile lands of this area with better rainfall and rivers. Their closeness to iron production centers also played a key role. In fact, it was the increased use of iron tools and weapons that enabled small states to become kingdoms, known as Mahajanapadas. The 16 Mahajanapadas are Anka, Magadha, Kashi, Batsa, Koshala, Shurasena, Panchala, Kuru, Matsya, Cheti, Avanti, Gandhara, Kamboja, Asmaka, Vaji, and Malla. In the course of time, the smaller or weaker kingdoms and republics were eliminated by the stronger rulers. In the 6th century, only four powerful kingdoms remained, such as Magadha, Avanti, Koshala and Batsa. Eventually, all of these were annexed to or became a part of the Magadha kingdom. Let us learn each Mahajanapadas in short. First one, Anga. This Mahajanapada finds mention in the Atharva Veda and the Mahabharata. During the rule of Bimpisara, it was taken over by Magadha Empire. It is located in present-day Bihar and West Bengal. Second one, Magadha. The most important among the Mahajanapatas was comprised of the area of Gaya and Patna in South Bihar. Its capital, Rajagriha, was an impregnable city protected by five hills. In the later period, the capital was shifted to Pataliputra. Buddha had achieved enlightenment in this area. Magadha had the fertile agricultural tracts and iron ores of South Bihar. Trade was also developed in Magadha during this period. The earliest dynasty of Magadha was founded by Brihadratha. However, Magadha came into prominence under Vimpisara and Ajatashatru. Third one, Kashi. It was one of the oldest and important Mahajanapatas located around the present-day Varanasi district of Uttar Pradesh. Its capital was Varanasi or Banaras. Kashi had the fertile agricultural tracts of the Ganga Basin and it was famous for its cotton textiles. The Dasharatha Chataka mentions Dasharatha and Rama as the king of Kashi and not of Ayodhya. By the time of Buddha, Kashi was annexed by the Kosala and this became the cause for the new war between Magadha and Kosala. Fourth one, Vatsa. Vatsa with its capital Kaushambi had been identified with the modern Allahabad and the surrounding areas. The Puranas records that the descendant of the Pantapas shifted the capital to Kaushambi after Hastinapur had been washed away by floods. Fifth one, Kuru. Kuru Janapata was one of the oldest and most prominent indo aryan Kshatriya tribes. Kuru was centered around the delhi Meerut region. Intraprasta is the capital of Kuru. The epic literature, the Mahabharata portraits, 
a conflict between two Kuru clan branches that were in power. Sixth one, Kosala. Kosala, situated on the bank of river Gomati in eastern Uttar Pradesh, was made prosperous by the king like Prasenachita and Vidutaba towards the end of the 6th century BC. The main cities of Kosala were Ayodhya, Saketa and Shravasti. Its capital was Ayodhya. The king of Kosala favoured both Brahmanism and Buddhism. Seventh one, Shurasena. The Shurasena situated around the place of Mathura on the bank of river Yamuna. Its capital was Mathura. The ruling family of Shurasena is seen referred as Yathus in Mahabharata. Eighth one, Panchala. Its capital was Ahichatra and Kampilya for its northern and southern regions respectively. It was located in present-day western Uttar Pradesh and it shifted from monarchy to being a republic later. Ninth one, Matsya. The Matsya territory was comprised of the Jaipur, Bharatpur, Alwar region of Rajasthan. This region was more suitable for cattle rearing. Its capital, Viratnagara, had become the hiding place for Pantavas. Later, it was absorbed by Magadha. Tenth one, Chedi. This was mentioned in the Rigveda. Its capital was Sotibadi. It lay around the present day Bundhalkan region. Eleventh one, Avanti. Avanti was significant in relation to the rise of Buddhism. Its capital was located at Uchain or Mahishmati. It was located around present day Malwa and Madhya Pradesh. Twelfth one, Gandhara. Gandhara was located between Kapul and Ravalpindi in the northwestern province. Their capital was at Takshila. Gandhara are mentioned in the Atharva Veda as people who were highly trained in art of war. It was important for international commercial activities. Thirteenth one, Kampoja. Kampoja had its capital name as Puncha. It is located in present-day Kashmir and Hindukush. Various literary sources mention that Kampocha was a republic. Fourteenth one, Asmaka. The Asmaka or Asaka Mahachanapatas was located on the bank of river Gotavari near modern Paitan in Maharashtra. Pratistana was the capital of Asmaka and this has been identified with Paitan. Fifteenth one, Vajji. Vajji located in the Vaishali district of Bihar had its geographical limits up to the hills of Nepal. Its capital was Vaishali. And the sixteenth one, Malla. Malla was comprised of the district of Gorakhpur, Basati and Deoria of Uttar Pradesh. The two important towns in Mallas were Kushinakara and Pava. Kushinakara is said to have been its capital. Next, we can discuss political structure of the Mahajanapatas. The Mahajanapatas were ancient Indian kingdoms that existed from the 6th century BC to the 4th century BC. The political structure of Mahajanapatas varied from kingdom to kingdom. But some common features were, first one is monarchy. Most of the Mahajanapatas were ruled by monarchs who were assisted by a council of ministers. Second feature, administrative divisions. The kingdoms were divided into administrative units such as provinces, districts and villages. The local administration was entrusted to officials appointed by the kings. Another feature, revenue system. The kingdom had a well-organized revenue system which included taxes on land, corpse and trade. The revenue collected was used to fund the administration and the army. Another feature, army. Each kingdom had a standing army which consisted of infantry, cavalry and elephants. The king was the commander-in-chief of the army. 
another feature judicial system the kingdom had a well developed judicial system which included courts and judges the judges were appointed by the king and the laws were based on the customs and traditions of the people another feature foreign policy the kingdoms had diplomatic relations with other kingdoms and tribes the king appointed envoys to negotiate treaties and alliances with other rulers overall the political structure of the mahachanapatas was characterized by a centralized monarchy a well developed administrative system a strong army and a sophisticated legal system next we can discuss socio economic developments in the mahajanapatas the mahajanapatas were characterized by several socio economic developments including first one agriculture agriculture was the primary occupation of the people in the mahajanapatas the fertile gangetic plains were the center of agriculture where farmers cultivated crops such as rice wheat and sugarcane second one trade the mahajanapatas were connected by a network of trade routes which facilitated the exchange of goods and ideas the main trade items were textiles spices and precious metals third one urbanization the mahajanapatas witnessed the growth of cities and towns which were centers of trade commerce and administration cities like Pataliputra, Takshila, and Vaishali became centers of art, culture, and education. Fourth one, social stratification. The Mahajanapatas were characterized by social stratification, where society was divided into different classes based on occupation and wealth. The Brahmins were the priestly class, while the Kshatriyas were the warrior class. the vaishyas were the merchants and traders while the shudras were the laborers and artisans fifth one art and architecture the mahajanapatas witnessed the development of art and architecture which reflected the cultural diversity of the region the mauryan empire which succeeded the mahajanapatas is known for its monumental architecture such as the ashoka pillars and the great stupa at sanchi sixth one religion the mahajanapatas were characterized by the coexistence of different religions such as hinduism buddhism and jainism the rise of buddhism and jainism challenged the authority of the brahmins and led the emergence of new social and religious movement overall the socio economic developments in the mahajanapatas led the foundation for the emergence of the mauryan empire which was one of the most powerful empires in ancient india another important aspect religious development in the mahajanapatas the period of the mahajanapatas which spanned from the 6th to 4th century bc in ancient india was marked by significant religious development during this time the major religions that emerged or gained popularity were hinduism buddhism and jains these religions had a profound impact on the social cultural and political life of the people of the mahajanapatas hinduism which had its root in the vedas continued to evolve during this period with the emergence of new religious texts including the upanishad and the bhagavad gita The Mahajanapatas also saw the rise of new religious practices such as asceticism, meditation, and the worship of new deities. Jainism, founded by Mahavira, also emerged during the time of the Mahajanapatas. Jainism promoted the idea of non-violence and strict asceticism and gained a significant following among the people of the time. Buddhism founded by Gautama Buddha emerged as a significant religious movement in the Magadha kingdom and gained many followers during the time of the Mahajanapada. Buddhism emphasized the importance of the four noble truths and eightfold path 
and its teaching had a significant impact on the social and political life of the people of the time. In short, the period of the Mahachanapathas was marked by significant religious development and emergence of new religious movements that continue to influence Indian culture and society to this day. In conclusion, the Mahachanapathas were a significant period in the history of ancient India. These 16 powerful kingdoms emerged in the 6th century BC and played a very crucial role in shaping India's political, economic and social landscape. The Mahachanapathas developed a sophisticated political system, advanced agricultural techniques and a thriving trade network. They laid the foundation for the emergence of the Mauryan Empire, which went on to become one of the largest empire in the world. The legacy of the Mahachanapathas can still be seen in modern day India and they remain an important chapter in the country's rich history. So that's it for today's session. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you like my video, please subscribe and click on bell icon. If you have any doubt regarding this topic, please do comment. So we will meet again with another important subject. Till then, bye.